Pathfinder Down, written by Tom Brannigan. Interior, SOE Training Facility, Day. Madeline studies alone as other trainees talk about her behind her back. SOE instructors watch everyone from hidden locations and take notes. Interior, SOE Headquarters. Madeline sits across a desk from a debonair 40-year-old man in a custom-tailored uniform, Major Paisley. He pulls a cigarette from an ornate case and offers one to Madeline with a manicured hand. She declines. Well, Miss Pinot? Mrs. Pinot, I'm a widow. Yes, my mistake. I see here your husband Gilles was killed in combat in 1940. Yes, as was my younger brother, Francois. Both of them served France bravely. Madeline sits a little taller. Sorry, yes, of course. My condolences. Uh, Mrs. Pinot, we are quite impressed with your performance. Really outstanding. We do, however, have some concerns. Go on, please. Madeline shifts slightly in the chair. Your father has stayed on in France with the Vichy government. What are your thoughts? My father isn't a bad man. He made sure I escaped to England before the occupation. I'm not sure why he stayed on. He's an opportunist, I know. She looks uncomfortable and shakes her head. It's hard to think of one's father as a traitor. I see. Could the relationship be used to our advantage? Madeline shrugs her shoulders. I'm not sure. What would be in it for him? Well, it's usually one of four reasons. M-I-C-E. Money. Ideology. Compromised and susceptible to blackmail or ego. Smartest person in the room syndrome. My guess is he might do it for money and you. I think you're here for ideology. I'm here to learn how to take my country back, Major. Madeline leans towards Paisley and scowls. We must stop fascism, Major. Look at Spain. Gone forever. Swallowed up by these criminals. These monsters. Then, the Sudeten land. The low countries. My beautiful France. Who will they devour next? England? Madeline sits back, determined. Paisley uses the silence. Madeline leans forward again, fire in her eyes. France is my country, not theirs. My husband, my brother, they shed their blood on French soil. I grieved for them long ago, Major. Now, I want revenge. I want that soil back. I want France back. Madeline retreats back in her chair. Could that attitude not lead to some rash decision-making? It's why I'm doing it, not how I'm doing it, Major. Emotions have no place in the execution of a task. I see. Yes. Paisley takes a note. Next, to be perfectly blunt, your communist leanings concern us. Mother always said, liberty... Equality and fraternity is communism in its truest form. For now, we have a common evil. All we need to concentrate on is winning this war first. Paisley reads from a dossier. Your mother, a professor of languages, a communist, died of lung disease. Yes, and a suffragette. She saved me from a life of misery. How so? Tell me more. She insisted that I be educated. Mother taught me Latin, English, and German. If it were up to my father, I would have been married off to have babies, and all the family resources would have been dedicated to my brother's success. How did you and your husband meet? Madeline becomes animated and almost smiles. Oh, yes. Jill was my choice. We chose each other, I should say. He was wonderful. The one person who understood me completely. Besides mother. Life was full of promise, love, and affection. Madeline's demeanor becomes more serious. Now, it's different. Madeline looks at the floor. Paisley clears his throat. Madeline, I will be candid. Your psychological profile describes you as cold, aloof, 
unwilling to connect in a meaningful way with others. We know that you can't succeed alone. My question is, can you work with other people? Madeline is unfazed. Of course. Madeline crosses her arms across her chest. 